our brothers are creatures that are made in the image of God, but they are not in the likeness of Christ. Hmm? Our brother is worldly and at times can become our enemy. You guys with me on this? If the likeness of Christ is not in him, then there is nothing spiritual about him. Hmm? Because I serve a spiritual God. My Lord is spiritual and not natural. So if you are not like him, then there's nothing spiritual about you. Note that it is because they have taken on the likeness of the world. And the world is an enemy of Christ. Yes, it is. You guys with me on this? Mm -hmm. Quote, this is the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he created him in the likeness of God. No, man was created in the likeness of God, but he was made in the likeness of Christ. Understand, creation and making do different things. You guys with me? Yes. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind mm -hmm. in the day they were created. And Adam, child, check this out, lived 130 years. Do you ever say 130 years? 130. That is in reference to what? Time. So therefore, this is in reference, brother Charles, to after the fall. Mm -hmm. You guys with me on this? Yes. The word says that Adam lived 130 years, which is time, and begot a son in his own likeness. He all say own, own. likeness after his own image. Can y'all say his? Yes. After his image and named him Seth. Genesis 5, 1 through 3. Follow me here. Understand that at the time Adam begot. You guys with me on this? Yeah. But the begotten that Adam begot was after his own image and his own likeness. You guys with me on this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not in the image and likeness of God, but in the fallen image and likeness of the world. In retrospect, in the nature of the world, because this was after the fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning that man fell out of his spiritual reality and fell into a systematic existence, or better yet, a systematic deception. You guys with me on this? This all is deception, saints. When you talk about your rooter and your tutor hurting, it's deception. It is not you. It is death personified. You guys with me on this? A minute ago, I could barely get up, Brother Tweedle, when I bent down to pick up something. But that's not me. That's this old house that is leading and going to destruction. Each and every second, it deteriorates. And if anybody tells you that that is not true, run from them because they're liars and they don't know the truth. I don't care if they work out extensively. It is still deteriorating. Second by second, minute by minute, hour. Day by day, month by month, year by year, decade by decade, you are not the same in your 20s as you are in your 60s. Right. Yes, amen. That's right. But, 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 can y'all say but? But. God presented to him, that is Adam, right? That's us, y'all, as pastors say, we're called Adam. Man is Adam to God, right? Not Adam and Eve, Adam. <laughs> but he presented to us a saving grace, knowing what was, knowing an Adam, that is the man, did not know what that was. He made a way of escape even then, and not even the angels knew the way of escape. And I Bet you a dollar to a donut. How many like donuts in here? I know I do. I just can't eat them hmm. like I used to. I bet you a dollar to a donut. Not many that per se to be theologians know what that saving grace is. Hmm. 
Yes, that's right. Amen. I can say that without fear of contradiction. I said many. I didn't say all, oh, dear. Remember, you said there's no absolutes. <laughs> and that, y'all, is the 130 years of time and what it spiritually symbolizes. Hmm? See, God made a way of escape for all of us, and we not even know it. Not even the angels in heaven even knew it. But those of us who sit in heavenly places, right, God, and receive what Christ is giving us, we know 100 is symbolic for children of promise. Hmm? No, I didn't say child of promise. And we're talking spiritually here. Right. Because God's numerical system is all spirit. There's nothing natural about it. That's the reason why people can't read the Bible without knowing the numbers, yeah. nor the names of folk. Mm -hmm. You have to research and study all of that. Yeah, that's right. Look, look, 100 is symbolic for children of promise, not child of promise, mm -hmm. but children. That's plural. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Of promise. And 30 is symbolic of the blood of Jesus, or in retrospect, the blood of Christ. Why do you think that it took him to 130 years to have set? Stay with me here. And it's also, 30 is also symbolic of dedication. Hence, indicating that God was dedicated to those who would once again become his children through the blood of Christ. Jesus, you guys see that? Do you guys see it? That's what 130 means. That God is dedicated. See, he loves us unconditionally. That's the reason why he's dedicated. To those who once again will become his children. Why do I say once again? Because this was before Jesus stepped on the scene. But Christ was always there. See, God knew everything that was going to transpire before the foundation of this earth, before the foundation of this world. So he was dedicated to those who would once again, once again become his children because we have fallen, fallen, but we're going to get up. Through the blood, we get up through the blood, through the blood. Isn't that what we just celebrated? Through the blood of Christ, which is Jesus. Y'all stay with me here. This is important. Therefore, making a way for man to once again be found in the image and likeness of God. Mm. Y'all right. see that? Amen. You see it? Hmm? Just because he did 130 years. However, understand due to the fall and the resurrection of Christ, we now have two likenesses and two images. Mm. Y'all see it? Well, we just read one which is Adam's, mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. We have the world likeness and image and we have Christ likeness and image. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? See, because of the fall, because of the fall, you cannot, you cannot pay attention to the fall, even though we're living in a new covenant. Mm -hmm. Because there are many of them, those out there, Brother Tweedle, that we call walking dead. Mm -hmm. And that's where you come in at, right, Sister Deidre? Mm -hmm. I want y'all to stay with me here. I want you to understand our brethren are those who, like us, have been born again and have now taken on the image and identity of Christ. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's our brethren. While our brothers who have come from the same father, hence the reason for them being our brothers, is mankind that has not been born again. Thus, not having the likeness of Christ, which is God. And because of this, their image is distorted. Y'all with me on this? Mm -hmm. Two out of the same household, but not joined together by the same spirit. Y'all with me on this? For example, Cain and Abel were brothers, but not brethren. You guys see that? Abel and Seth were brethren. Isaac and Ishmael were brothers, but not brethren. You guys with you guys follow me? Jacob and Esau were brothers, but not brethren. Jesus and Lucifer were once brothers, but are now not brethren. You guys see that? 
Say, well, how is that? Because if I'm Jesus' brother and now his brethren, so was Lucifer, because Lucifer was created by the same word that I was. This goes to show us, Brother Charles, that you can be born out of the same household of faith and yet not still be related. And that happens today as well. You guys with me on this? Yeah. So the question that God presented to us through Cain is this, Sister Dorch, am I my brother's keeper? Genesis 4 and 9, right? The answer here, Ruth, is yes, we are. We are. And that answer is just as relevant now, even more so today, than as it was then. Hmm? For the goal is to get our brothers to become our brethren. You guys with me on this? That's our goal. Hmm? Why? Turn with me to 2 Peter 3 and 9. Reading out of the New King James Version. It says, quote, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Why? Because his promises are yea and amen, right? Hmm? As some count slackness, but is long suffering. Can y'all say long suffering? Long suffering. Towards us, not willing that one should perish. But can y'all say all? all? Say it again. All. Say it one more time. All. See, some of us think that we're just in a club that belongs to Jesus that is just us for and no more. You guys understand? And everything I do is correct and right and righteous. And everything that everybody else does outside of these four walls is what? Is wrong. Right. We're being judgmental when Christ is not even judging us. Who are we to judge our brother? Oh, no. Understand this. He says, but all should come to what? Repentance. Yeah. That includes our brothers. He didn't say some. He didn't say just those who are my children. He said, oh, long suffering is not eternal. See, some of us think that it is. It is not eternal, meaning that his patience will soon run out. <laughs> you guys see that? Huh? Huh? In other words, his patience will run short. Hmm? That's the reason for the rapture. You guys with me? You guys, y'all following me on this? This is important. But his desire is for not one to perish, which once again includes our brothers. Hmm? Therefore, we, can y'all say we? We. Say it like you mean it. We. Because it is about you. That's part of it. We have a duty that is a declaration to go out and glorify the Father by seeking, serving, and saving the lost. Oh, Jesus. You guys understand that? Yes. Seeking, serving, and saving our brothers. Now that's love. Hmm? For it is our brothers who are lost. And let me say this too. Some of our brethren are lost too. Mm. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. That's right. That's true. And Christ is about to talk about that right now. Turn with me to Luke 6 32 through 36. I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version. But understand that this is Jesus speaking. How do I know that? You know it's Jesus speaking. Well, school taught me and church taught me that anything in red hmm. <laughs> is Jesus speaking. No rocket scientists to this stuff. Jesus made it simple and plain for us to get it. We don't have to guess about it. Mm -hmm. So that's me. Quote, but if you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? <laughs> Are y'all feeling this? Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that again. This is Jesus talking. If you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? So everybody who's got these cliques in their families, mm -hmm. 
because they love for their families to tell them how wonderful they are. Yeah. That's expected. Yeah. What credit is that to you? I expect my wife to be in my corner. Mm -hmm. I expect my wife to be my number one cheerleader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I expect for her to make corrections to me in private when I'm wrong. Y'all guys got it? In private. You, you got me? Because she wouldn't have it any other way. Because to embarrass me would be an embarrassment on her. Why? Because we're one, Brother Charles. You guys understand me? And this is what Jesus is saying. If you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? Every sinner loves those who loves them. Oh, Jesus. Y'all getting this picture? Yeah. See, you're hanging out in these four walls with your brethren who said, oh, I love the message. Oh, you are so eloquent. Oh, lady so-and-so, you are superb. Oh, pastors, ministers, y'all are just wonderful. Oh, it's just wonderful. And Jesus is saying that's no better than sinners. Mm -hmm. oh my God. Stay with him. For every sinner loves those who loves them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that for you? See, we like to show our goodness through our brethren. But like you said, Pastor, in Sunday school, not through our brother. Mm -hmm. When we see their houses falling down yeah. and we got a million dollars in our bank account, yeah. we'll overstep them yeah. right there. and yeah. judge them and think that they're worse than any creature on this God-given earth mm -hmm. because they got to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm getting rich from the money that you guys are giving me. I'm conning you and deceiving you. And I'm the one with the Cadillacs. <laughs> the BMWs. You guys understand this? Right, yeah. hmm? mm -hmm. Stay with God here. For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? Let me say this. For all of you who are part of this ministry, for everybody who has given a dime to this ministry, we have covered this fact with you. Why? Because, see, if I give to somebody in this ministry because today they down, perhaps maybe tomorrow they'll be up and replenish that what I've given them. You guys understand me? So there is an expectation and a hope that once you get on your feet, you will give. That's right. Yeah. That's with my brethren. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do. But when you go out there and give to your brothers, mm -hmm. you don't have no expectations no, of anything in return. Oh, yeah. Hence the food cards, the gas cards. Mm -hmm. Hence the laundromats. We have given to our brothers out here without any expectation of anything in return. And because you have given to this ministry, you are part of that. Continue to give to this ministry. We'll continue to make you part of that because we're going out this year bolder than the way we've been out before. Now we will not just meet a need, but we will speak Christ to the need. Yeah. Yeah. God has given me something, sis, yeah. and we got to talk about it. All right. And this is not going to be for the faint of heart. So yeah. if you can't speak to people about Christ mm -hmm. and you embarrassed about it, don't come out with us. No. Mm -hmm. don't <laughs> Look, stay back and forth. Understand that places may throw us out. You got to be ready for that. I have been thrown out. Remember Lincoln Mall? Yeah. They physically almost threw me out of there because I was giving away tracks years and years ago. I was not in that mall buying anything. I was in there. If you were to die tomorrow, what do you think you spend eternity? <laughs> People got upset with that. They got security on me and they threw me out of Lincoln Mall. Mm -hmm. So this is not for the faint of heart. But we're going to do it a, kind of a little differently this time around. Well, it's all safe. But we're going to do it with the resources that God has given us. And that's the resources that you guys have provided us. Because this is not about us getting our own place. 
There's a season for that, and I believe that God will provide for that. Yeah. But this is about giving back to our brothers or giving to our brothers so that we can in turn have the opportunity to share Christ with them, to expand God's kingdom. You don't expand God's kingdom with our brethren. Right, Charles? You expand God's kingdom through our brothers because our brethren is already saved, supposedly. You guys with me on this? Look at what he says here. For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your what? Enemies. Love your what? Enemies. And remember, I told you, sometimes our brothers can be our enemies. Because they may be. You guys, you guys do realize that some people will probably, that our brothers will probably, probably try to lay hands on you in the worst way. <laughs> because you preaching and teach because you speaking and preaching Christ this is not for the faint of heart if you're not ready to sacrifice don't come I'll do it because I'm ready to get them ready look at what he says here but love your enemies do good and lend hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great and see, that's the thing. For those who give to us mm -hmm. and we go out representing their gifts to God, their reward will be great. You see how that works? Without them even knowing it. We don't just can all your money and sit on a can. No, we give it to our brothers that are in need without hoping for anything in return other than they receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. We plant a seed. Somebody else will come to water it and God will get the increase. That's what this ministry does. Look, 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 look. And you will be sons of the most high if you do this for he is kind to the unthankful. He is what? Kind. To the unwho and the evil. That's your brother. That is your brother. You guys feeling this? Yes. Therefore, be merciful. Just as your father also is merciful. I don't know if you believe God and the word of God, but I do. I do. And I've got to be kind to my brothers. And see, that's the reason why we come together corporately, because not always, all the time, we can do it individually, even though we do. But corporately, there's nothing we can't do. That means together, right? When God takes his resources and put them together, there's nothing we can't do. That's the reason why we're able to go out and give thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars to our brothers, in which we have. Maybe some people say, oh, he's crazy. He, you know, he doesn't even have a facility of his own. He's given thousands. And we will continue to do so because we trust God. Yeah. It's not our money. That's right. It's not our money. It's God's resources. And God said, go out and compel them. And listen, let me tell you something. This ministry has a mandate. God says that he's going to give out $10,000. $10,000. A thousand to each family to help them at this particular point in time with their specific needs. You guys understand that? Eventually, this ministry will get to that point if we not have not already gotten there. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for God to release me to do it. Mm -hmm. And I will go to the board or whoever else boldly and say, God has this mandate and we better do it. Because I don't know about y'all, everything we have given out, we have received back. 20-fold. 20-fold, brother Charles, and resources. And look around you. Look around this place. Do you see every pew filled? Do you see this place bulging out with people? No. But God will send one person to send us to give us $1,000 just from what we're doing now. You guys understand what's happening. They're not sitting in this pew. They're sitting at home. And let me tell you something. COVID has done something to people to make them want to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> and when you get a good word 
and you're doing righteously by God's resources, folk will give. Yeah. Matthew 5, 43 through 48 says this, and this is Jesus. Quote, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Why would you hate your brother? And God says, no, 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 no. You can't do that. That makes you a liar. He didn't say love your brother. He says your brother. If you say, I love you, God, I love God and hate my brother. He didn't say and hate your brethren. He said, hate your brother. That goes well beyond your brethren. Yes. Then you are a liar because God is basing on the people you don't even know. Yes. He's basing his, he's basing your love for him on the people that you don't even know. That's right. Yes, amen. That's right. You guys feeling me on this? Makes sense? He says, but I say to you, love your enemies. Do what? Bless those who what? Curse you. Do good to those who what? Hate you. You guys feeling this stuff? God is not playing with us. And this is what he's expecting out of us. This is what we have to do. Hmm? Hmm. Now, we may need work in doing it, but as long as you're striving for it <laughs> and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Saul, Saul, why does thou persecute this me? That you may be sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the who? The evil. And on the good. See, you ain't got nothing coming just because you in Christ Jesus. God is looking at us as Adam. And let me tell you something. Adam means that we're one. Jesus. We're one with our brothers and our brethren. When y'all gonna get some good teaching like this? No, no, no. I'm not trying to wag my own tail. <laughs> But understand, it's not me, but this is Jesus yeah. speaking through me. That's right. The reason why that is, Pastor, is because he sees us all as one. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why if you say you hate your brother, you're saying that you hate half of you. Mm -hmm. Jesus. How can you hate yourself? How can you insert pain on yourself? What do they call those folk? Masochists? Masochists. 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 And skits of what? This is what God is talking about. If you really look at it spiritually, we are all one. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why he called us man what? Kind. Yeah. Yes. Just because I'm in Christ Jesus don't mean that I'm not part of man. Mm -hmm. Kind. Mm -hmm. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Back to the scripture. Does not even tax collectors do the same? Remember in this uh, ministry, we talked about tax collectors and who they were and what they symbolized back then in that day. I'm not going to go into that right now because we got to move on. He said, Therefore, you shall be perfect. You shall be what? Perfect. What? Perfect. Say it again. Perfect. Just as your father in heaven is perfect. That means that there's perfection that we have on the inside of us. Look, 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 look. What makes us perfect? What makes us perfect? By winning the, the loss at any cost. That's what he just said. That's what he's saying in that scripture. By winning the loss at any cost. At any cost. If they put you out of the store. <clears throat> if they shove you. If they talk about you and your mom. <clears throat> You still supposed to love and win them over at any cost. If they try to get you fired, you still gotta love them. You guys understand what I'm saying? Because you see, because anybody who's in Christ Jesus is not gonna try to harm you or get you fired. So that tells you right there, those are your brothers instead of your brethren. Right. By being my brother's keepers. Y'all with me on this? Yeah. By getting ready and getting them ready. Understand that we are in the business of souls. Y'all do know that, right? Yes. We're not here to make a profit in money. 
I'm not here to get a Taj Mahal as a facility. I'm not here to have people falling all out of the pews and onto the streets where it's a line to get in here. I'm in the business of saving my brother's soul. Mm -hmm. You guys with me on this? Yes. Yes. That is how we expand the kingdom and become wise men. For he who wins souls it's is wise. wise. Proverbs 1130. We are not supposed to be lovers of the world. Check this out, Pastor Allen. We're not supposed to be lovers of the world, but we are supposed to be givers of the world. Oh, Jesus. You guys see that? So that the world might. Can y'all say might? might. Can y'all say it again? Might. Say it one more time. Be saved through us. Jesus, Jesus. Jeremiah 32 and 27 says this, quote, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all what? Flesh. That's our brothers too, y'all. That's flesh is, flesh is evil. <laughs> Jesus. But he said that he's the Lord of, over it. Is there anything too hard for me? Because God is into converting. <laughs> Jesus. John 3, 16 through 17 says, quote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not, what, perish. That's what it's all about. But have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. That means to judge it. See, God did not send Jesus to judge us. It's a time and place for that. You guys, but we steady out here judging our brothers. Oh, look at what they got on. Like my sister said earlier, Pastor Carolyn said, we may even say, oh, that, that woman was off key in, in the choir. Yeah. This, this one was that. That was always jockeying for the pastor's attention. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, that. Then there's that. But that the world might be saved. And that's saved through him. And we have the same mission that Christ had. Mm -hmm. We were sent for the same purpose. Look, yeah. 1 John 4, 17 says this, love has been perfected among, among us. And this way, that we may have boldness in the day of what? Judgment. Yeah. Look, 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 look. But this is the caveat, Sister Dorch. This is it. This is it. Because as he is, so are we in this world. The mission doesn't deviate. It has not changed. And it has been around here even before the foundation of this world, of this earth. The revolution is alive. <laughs> Let me say it again. The revolution is alive. The revolution is you. Because you're the one who's going to change things. Yeah. And if the church don't change things, who will? Oh, the Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> Jesus came to seek, to serve, and to save. And so have we. Y'all getting this? Yes. Therefore, we are not to condemn, that is to judge our brothers, but rather love them by offering them eternal life. See, we got to understand. How do we understand, Pastor? Because we were once in their condition and yes. in their position. Remember, you talked about it. Yeah. And for those who have forgotten where they came from, they'll never know where they're going. It's the reason why you don't judge them. You understand them. Yeah. And you do work. You work with them. Yeah. Work with you. Yeah. Amen. Now, that, Pastor Carolyn, is perfection. Mm. Why? Because eternal life is perfect. Yeah. You guys see it? See outside the natural lenses of the scope of your peripheral vision and get into God's vision. And all of this is stated in the scriptures read in our anchor script. Let's chat about them really quickly. But first, remember that God's word is full of what? First John 4, 20 through 21 says this quote. If someone says, quote, I love you, God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. I hope you guys understand what he's talking about now since yeah. we talked about this. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love a God whom he has not seen? 
And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Here, Christ is telling us through John that he is not impressed with our lip service. You guys feeling that? Yeah. Lip service does not impress him. I love you, Lord. I love you, God. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And then I go and I kick past Lee in the rear end. <laughs> you guys understand what I'm saying? In the seat. There are some in the body of Christ that hates his brethren, let alone those who are not even in the body, which are our brothers. God is not impressed with what we say. Let me say that again, Ruth. God is not impressed by what we say, but rather he is pleased by what we do. Yeah. You guys understand that? That's why he said be doer of his word. Hate is such a strong word. Check this out. But not in the lens or the eyesight of God. Hmm. Let me say that one more time because I need for y'all to get this. Hate, that's to us, is such a strong word. Right. Yeah. But not... In the lens or the eyesight of God. You want to know why? Understand that our father, understand to our father, hate is the opposite of love. Right? Hmm? In other words, hate is the opposite of who he is. For God is love. Right? You can read that in 1 John 4, 16. Hmm? Therefore, anything that is opposite of him, of God, to him is hate. Let me say that again. Anything. 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 Can I say that again? Yes. Anything. 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 That is opposite of God to him is hate. For example, something as simple as gossiping towards your brothers or your brother to him is what? Hate. Or let me just say this. Let me put it where the sheep can get it, Brother Charles. Or not extending an opportunity of Christ for our brothers, for eternal life, mm -hmm. to him is hate. Ooh, I just said something that you guys should have fallen out of your seats. Look, 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 look. Let me say it again. Not extending an opportunity to Christ, not extending an opportunity to our brothers to receive Christ for eternal life to God is hateful. It's hate. I'm talking to all of us that are do nothing churches. Mm -hmm that come in these four walls and we shout and scream and flip and jump and dance and lose ourselves and 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 and, and tirade around and oh god oh god oh god oh god and do all of that stuff have all that stuff and we never go out to compel our brothers to come in wow. even if i have fifty thousand members god wants you to have fifty thousand more I call those do nothing churches. And they think that they're doing a good job because they're giving an excellent word. Now, don't get me wrong, this is an excellent word because it's a word from Christ. But if I don't put into practice what I'm saying out there behind these four walls and you guys don't see that, then it means nothing. It's lip service. And if we say we love God, but do the, but, but do the spiritual and natural thing to harm our brothers and sisters or our brothers, we are liars meaning that we don't love God. It goes against his word that he has given us, and that is his commandments, hmm? which includes going out and making disciples what, of all nations. See, you can't make disciples of all nations in here. You've got to go out, Ruth, and make disciples of all nations outside of this church. Therefore, the question is, then is, how do we love our brothers in the sight of God? That will, in essence, prove that we love God. Turn with me to Romans. I'm going to be real quick, y'all. Turn with me to Romans. I want you to go with me to Romans 12. I'm reading it out in the New King James Version. I'm starting at verse 9. You guys with me? Yes. Let yes. love be without hypocrisy. Let love be without what? Hypocrisy and whore, what is what? Evil. evil. This is what we have to do when we go out here, when we give. Because we're in the likeness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ gave. Be kind. It says, it, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly what? Love. Brotherly what? Love. And honor. 
giving preference to one another. That means not judging our brothers, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Serving who? The Lord. Rejoicing in what? Oh, there's your faith. You rejoice in faith. You know, faith is the substance of things what? Oh, Hope for in the evidence of what? Things not seen. There it is. Patient in tribulations. Why? Because like you said, Pastor, we were born into sin. Yeah. It's in us. Yeah. There are going to be trials and tribulations. But what you do concerning those trials and tribulations. Oh, I have a headache. I have a headache and I can't function today. Right. Let me tell y'all something. I have headaches every single day. Got one now. I don't pay attention to. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Given to hospitality. And I am convinced that if I was not in Christ Jesus, you guys would be coming in praying over me and my wife at some hospital somewhere. I've seen it. My father went through this. And I'm not claiming anything that he has because I'm in Christ Jesus. And I'm going to live until Christ rapture me. And I hope it's with the corporate rapture. But if it's the personal one, that's, that's all right. Whichever way, I'm going to go home. Isn't that right, Pastor? Look, 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 look. Continuing steadfastly and what? Prayer. Have a prayer life, prayer life y'all. Yeah. Distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. So we are supposed to give to one another, the brethren as well, as to our brothers. Look what he says. Bless those who persecute you. Now he's turning it on to our brothers. Hmm? Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We're talking about outside this place, y'all. Be of the same mind towards one another. That means that I can't have a mind for you and a different mind for them out there. Y'all feeling me with this? You got me, brother? Charles, life will be a lot simpler and better if we operate like this. Yeah. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Well, I got Christ Jesus and I'm righteous. I'm self-righteous. Mm -hmm. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all of what? All men. All in the sight of who? All, all men. Not just your brethren. Not just people who are playing church with you. Mm -hmm. Y'all catch that later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it is possible, he says, if it is possible, as such as depends on you, live peacefully. See, not everybody's going to allow you to live peacefully. No. Peacefully. Mm -hmm. Not even some that's in your own household is going to allow that. <laughs> right, dear? <laughs> right? Yes. That's the reason why he says, if it is possible, it is as possible. much as it depends possible. on who? You. Control that. Control that. <laughs> because I can't control the other. Hello, William. <laughs> See, I'm trying to stay around here so I can continue to be a father to him. Look, 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 look. Beloved. Do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Quote, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. That's what we're going to be doing, y'all. That's what we're going to be doing. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. I don't know about you, but too many coals of fire on my head, I'm going to step out. Yes. I need to do this better. Bring your gym shoes with you after Mother's Day. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. And what is good? God. I'm about done, y'all. First John 5, 1 through 3 says this. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whoever believes that what? 
Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. I'm not going to kid y'all. When we go out here to do what we have to do that's bold, there should be churches lined up to go out with us doing yeah. the same thing we're doing. And if God has given you something that is bold in this area, call us, call me, we'll go. Look, by this we know that we love the children of God. By this we know what? That we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his what? Commandments. And his commandments are not what? Grievous. Burdensome. Yes, grievous. No, that Christ through John is now speaking to us about the importance of, re of the rebirthing process. For this is spiritual and not natural. And it involves our brothers and not our brethren. Hmm? Simply put, Christ is telling us that for those of us who are begotten by and is of him are to love him that is also are to love them or him i'm talking about the small h are to love him that is also begotten by him but is not of him did you guys catch that let me say that again christ is telling us who are begotten by and is of him it's my brother and is of him that we are to love him, that is our brothers out here, that is also begotten by him, but is not of him. Yeah. You guys see that? But yeah. is not of him. The difference is you're of him, they're not. Right. You guys see that? Yeah. And we do this by keeping his word, which is not hard to bear. In other words, this is not something that is hard for us to become, for this is who we are, his spoken word. Stay with me here. Last but not least, 1 John 5, 4 through 5 says this, for, quote, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's a question. The goal then is to get our brothers to become overcomers of the system or systems, which is the world. What are the systems? The systems operate on the inside of you. You got a heart. You got lungs. You got a colon. Hmm? You got intestines. Those are all systems. You got respiration. You have an emphatic system. Those are all systems. That's the world. That's, that's these bodies that we have to overcome. Now, let me just say this. To overcome something is to conquer it, to defeat it, or to prevail against it. We overcome the world, that is the system, that is flesh, through our actions in the living. See, if I believe I have a headache, I have a headache. What if I don't believe I have a headache? I don't have a headache. I think in some cases in the world, or in scientific study, they call that mind over matter. It works. Hmm? To overcome something, look, 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 look. But we are truly not overcomers. I'm going to say this again, Charles. We are truly not overcomers until we have transitioned into life that is eternal. Mm -hmm. hmm? Yeah, that's true. Yep. Meaning that there will be no more systems to overcome because we prevail against them. If you don't, that's going to be a really rough system mm -hmm. that you can't overcome. Oh, man. Hmm? It's called the lake of fire. That is the reason why our faith has the victory. Faith is our victory, for it is our hope that transition into our belief that turns into our desire that manifests itself into craving, that leads to trust, that ends in reality. Mm -hmm. The reality is going home. Mm -hmm. And that's the rapture. Mm -hmm. All from loving our brother and blessing him with an opportunity to be our brother. Quote, 
How can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's y'all. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, check this out, Brother Charles. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Who am I in Christ? One who loves his brother. God glory. For those of you who want to be one who loves his brother and become part of the good news, and that is Christ is born, Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will return again. Then make this declaration after me by repeating this. I want you to say, God, God, God I know that I am a sinner. No, that I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he died for my sins. And that you raised him to life. And that you raised him to life. I trust him as my savior. And will follow him as Lord from this day forward. And will follow him from this day forward. Guide my life. Guide my life. And help me to do your will. And help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Now, if you've just made that declaration, if you have just made that prayer, and you believed it in your heart, I want you to know that the angels of heaven are rejoicing. Jesus, there, if you can close your eyes and see, has his arms stretched out wide for you to give you that beautiful hug. And I am overjoyed because I have another brother and or sister in the kingdom of heaven. To God be the glory. Let me just leave you guys with this. It is so important that we go after our brothers during this time, that I cannot express how important it is. The corporate rapture is about to begin. Whether it's tomorrow, whether it's the next hour, whether it's in five years or 10 years, it's about to begin. And God has given us a decree and that is to get ready and get them ready. There's going to be some bold things that we're going to do when we go out. And I'm not talking about knocking on doors because people are being blown away by knocking on doors today. Mm -hmm. we, tr we trust God for our protection, mm -hmm. but we know God for his wisdom. Right. And God That's has right. given me a plan that I have to discuss with my pastors of how we're going to do this. And how this time we're going to discuss Christ with them. If you were to die today, Brother Charles, where do you think you will spend eternity? First of all, do you believe in God? Because if you don't believe in God, then eternity won't matter to you. But as they say, I'd rather have them. <laughs> and not need them than to need them and not have them. I don't know about you, but it costs me nothing to have them. Huh? But look at what it can cost me not to have them. So I want you guys to get ready. For those who won't be able to go out with us, we're going to have us a good time for Mother's Day. Don't get me wrong. But after Mother's Day, it's on. And for those who cannot go out with us, we trust that you'll be here praying. Praying for those of us. We're probably being kicked out of wherever. No, no, God is. No, grace and God is. Yes. Oh, Lord. Or people talking about us. They don't talk anything. Come on. <laughs> so we need your prayers. And for those who are serious about expanding God's kingdom, I'm talking about 
my brothers and sisters that are in Christ that have ministries, you need to call me because we can conquer this together. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid about your resources. Resources don't matter because God is the source. Yes. Amen. If I can say that as a small church who have given thousands and have received even greater thousands than those of you who are mega and anything else in between ought to be able to do the same, if not better. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, give you glory and honor. We come before you, magnifying your name, glorifying you, lifting you up and just singing and shouting and saying hallelujah, hallelujah. to the most high precious glory. God. We thank you for this word that has gone forth on this day, Father God. We know about the technical difficulties, but we, but you have overcome those. Yes. We thank you for our radio broadcast. We thank you for those who are listening to us on the radio program. Those who expound, Father God, to be one with you. We say thank you. Thank you. Those of you who are in our radio broadcast that want to give of your resources and your finances to this ministry, we say thank you. Thank you. We just bless you and we praise you for our brothers and sisters in Africa, even for our brothers and sisters in Italy. Thank you. We say thank you. We love you. But more than that, God loves you. Yes. And we look forward to chatting with you. Thank you. So, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for this spirit side chat. We thank you for everything that has happened in this ministry today. And we look forward, Father God, to the next time we meet, which will be in the next minute or two, because we're always meeting with you, Lord. But until the next time we come together corporately as your people, we want to give you praise and honor and bless your name. Yes, Thank you for blessing yes. each and every household. Yes. We pray all this in the mighty name of your dear son, Thank Jesus, you, and through Jesus. our Lord and Savior, Jesus to Christ. Amen. 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 amen and amen. 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 God be the glory. Hallelujah.